So good to be back. It's great to be back, guys. Jamming with the boys. Welcome back. Mika Kane. Let's start.
So, Mika, what do you fill your days with now? Yeah, so um, I've been really busy teaching um, ukulele in three different jobs, I guess you could say. So the first one is teaching online at um, a community college here at Oahu, Windward Community College. So I teach a ukulele one class, like a beginner introductory, introductory class. And then next week, Monday or the following Monday, I start teaching an eight-week high, um, accelerated hybrid course um, of ukulele two. It's like a continuation. So I, that, I got that going. And then next semester, fall semester 2022, I'm actually going to be teaching at Windward Community College as well as UH West Oahu. So two of the community colleges here um, teaching online ukulele. And then during my day, I am still at the Hawaii Youth Correctional Facility at the boys' home teaching well, boys and girls at the incarcerated youth here in Hawaii. This is my fourth year or my eighth and final semester um, before I transition into teaching at college. And then I've been ramping up my private lessons on the side, Mika Kana Music. So my days have been very busy, but you know, can't complain because I got all my jobs geared to this wonderful instrument. So it's been, it's been a heck of a ride, it's been a pleasure. And while I was busy doing all of that, the 18 month awaited cola. <laughs> yeah, so it's nine to 12 months. So 18 months later, I got, <laughs> I, got my, I got my custom cola. I actually ordered it, I believe, in June of 2020, right in the beginning of COVID. And then I got it just last month in January. Noah texted me saying, it's done. And I was there that, that later that day. I was like, okay, I'm coming today. He's like, okay. <laughs> so I came in. I was like, yes. So yeah, I picked it up. Back in January, um, I've been playing this thing every day, trying to tune it in, you know, see what's the, sh the best type of strings to put on here and, you know, play it to get it to open up. And this thing is such a, this thing is such a hammer. It's, it's one of the best ukuleles I've ever played. And I'm so happy to know that it's mine. And I'm not, and I'm not just sound sampling it and it's <laughs> going somewhere else. Um, and finally have my own custom ko'olau. So some of the specs on this, so on the front, we have German spruce or German moon spruce. Really beautiful cortisone, really, really nice. Um, uh, the the cortisone, yeah, the, the, great, the wood grain is so beautiful. And then on the sides, we have, of course, the curly coal binding on the top and back. And then Indian rosewood, um, a nice brown chocolate Indian rosewood on the back, on the sides. And then back here on the front, um, I really wanted the abalone. It's usually, Noah doesn't usually put abalone around the, the outside of the uke, but I wanted that. Um, and then green is one of my absolute favorite colors. So I wanted to go ahead and have the green accent literally everywhere he could stick it. So on the front, on the sides with the curly coil, here on the back, on the, the heel of the instrument, right around, wrapping around the fretboard right here, wrapping around the headstock right here, um, on the inside of the headstock right here pretty much everywhere so i love the green theme i love the classical kind of guitar look classical guitar um pairing of the woods uh spruce and rosewood it's one of my all-time favorite combinations so i know i knew i needed it and after talking with andrew talking with Corey, talking with uh noah about you know what do you guys think the best wood combination would be for my style playing and all of them pretty much came to the same conclusion like i think spruce and rosewood would be the way to go so I told Noah, and then Noah got three sets of spruce, three sets of the rosewood, and he laid it out. And I asked him point blank, like, "What? Which set would you pick for each one?" So he's just like, "I was like, okay, I'll take it." And this is the one that he picked out for me. So I am so happy. You know, I just I let him just do everything. I, you know, usually I'm really particular, like, "Oh, I want to see this. I want to do that. I want it this way." But Noah is such a master at his craft that I was just like, "I want you to pick the woods. I want you to just." do your magic and he absolutely delivered you know delivering another perfect instrument and like i said i'm just <laughs> so happy that i have my own koolau and so it, it, awesome. it's so beautiful and it plays so nice it's it's you know perfectly set up um i got my favorite one of my favorite string sets on here the uke logic string set the pink uke logics and the way i like to have it set up is that i like to have the soft tension on the GCE on the upper three strings and then I like to put the hard tension um, on the A string so I can dig in a little more but as all of you know I, I like to make fun of myself and say I have girl hands so the way I get around the softer tension is putting it on the top three strings and then putting it on the A string so all together it still feels really easy to play but I can still dig in 
um, for my finger style on the A string. Um, the only other two things that I want to mention about this with the backstory is that this logo on the 12th fret, um, give a special shout out to my girlfriend because she went ahead and made it look all nice, uh, designed it for me. And then I had my sister who, thankfully she's a graphic design artist, she went ahead and you know put it down, put it on her computer, uh, made it to the right files, went ahead and sent it to Ryan at Koalao and then he did his magic and put it on the 12th fret. So really beautiful job by Koola, my girlfriend and my sister. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the headstock, or not the headstock, but the tuners. So these are really special tuners because at first I didn't know about these tuners or I didn't want these tuners. These are the Waverly Black Tahitian um, Pearl tuners. And I actually originally wanted just regular black and gold gold tools, which is what Noah usually puts on his CS models. Um, but one day I kind of just walked into the office and he had them laying out. I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, it's just Waverly tuners. It's just the black Tahitian pearls. I'm like, whoa, like those are so sick. Like those are so nice. He's like, can I have those? Is it too late? He's like, oh no, you can, but it's going to cost a lot more. I'm like, put it on my tab. Like I'll take it. It's so beautiful. And now that I got to see it, you know, live on the, on this headstock, it's just the most beautiful tuners I've ever seen. And I'm so stoked that it's a part of this, this instrument. So yeah, that's pretty much everything with this, you know, 18 month in the making, you know, it's, it's been a journey just kind of seeing the progress and, you know, anxiously waiting to own my very own koala. You know, in my opinion, you know, it's so subjective to say like, this is the best ukulele or this is the best ukulele, it's the best sounding ukulele. But, you know, in all, all of the ukuleles I sound sampled in the last few years, uh, koala is easily one of the best instruments I've played all together. One of the most consistently best sounding instruments that I've ever played from all of the different wood combinations. Uh, Noah Bonk is the man. He's just a master at his craft. You know, I look at, I stare at my instrument every day and I'm just trying to find something and he just, he just, he just nails it every single time. So, um, big special shout out to, to Noah from Ko'olau, Ryan from Ko'olau. They, they do such a beautiful job and it's an honor to be able to finally own my own Ko'olau. So, so he I'm super stoked. So Here's I'm a sound sample. All right, let's. I know I'll talk, 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 but no, no playing, right? So, like I said, I've had this instrument from about the beginning of January. It's we're all in the middle, middle of February. Yeah. This instrument's opened up a lot, and again, there's a pair of Uke Logics on this instrument. Again, I liked how it's so balanced. A lot of depth, a lot of oomph, a lot of warmth, beautiful sustain, really crystal clean <laughs> on the top frets. Yeah, this instrument makes me really happy. So, enough of my talking. Here is a sound sample of this beauty. I'll just see where this takes me.
yeah this thing is again an absolute treat to play so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hope you guys will be seeing a lot more of this cola it's gonna be my new workhorse you're gonna be seeing it a lot in the future so keep an eye on it so sweet yeah that is my new koala set up from joel the best the best ukulele set up here joel billy all the rest of the guys I'll downstairs don't let billy hear that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the best yeah. <laughs> Oh. And then, you know, the best, <laughs> one of the best ukulele makers in the world, Mr. Noah Bonk, making my, my custom cola. Yeah, so, what a gem. I, this is a gem, and I'm so stoked. It was worth the 18 months. Um, I absolutely love it. So, Beautiful. if you guys want to custom, get a cola, man. I, I pulled the trigger. You guys should pull the trigger, too. So hey. I'm super stoked. Spruce go. is so nice, too, with the quarter song. It's so nice. and Yeah, perfect. Noah's really... Uh, critical with his wood selections right so yeah. shelf the old toy and make room for this new bad boy do you re uh were you with us when we got this uh might have been before you were working with us but we had this custom from ryan that was a lattice brace did you ever play that no well anyways we had um ryan do the design for a new Pono Master the Series. The Master Series, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I never got to play any of those. They're <clears> so good. I got to try it. But, uh, yeah, tonight we're going to sample the spruce top ones with, I think, like five different sets of strings. Yes. So let's Beautiful. jump into that. You're going to love these. Beautiful. Gosh, shucks, I can't see it. <laughs> what? The lattice bracing. Oh, yeah, if you put your hand in, you might be able to feel that. Uh, it's like one step closer to a cold house. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I feel it now. I just feel the X. Oh, nice, yeah, it's a cold house. I just took it off for it. Yeah, I don't know. I was wearing it. Okay, let's see it. Wow. Is that the first time you're playing one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Whoa. Wow. There's a lot of depth to this. Whoa. The balance is... Holy crap. Nice, huh? Wow. It's super balanced, but it still punches. With... Wow. Beautiful. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna get each of you guys to do. So. Oh, so is this gonna be like when we did the string comparisons? Like, just play a thirty-second clip. Yeah, over and over. just like a 30 second thing and then I'll we'll get it from all three of you guys and then okay. we'll talk about what we do. Okay. Hear. Wait, are these are low key? Oh, yeah they are. <clears throat> such a full sound like body clarity like I'm, I'm very impressed like it's pretty close to that's like a koala like yeah. like what I was saying Like pro classic? 
How much? Twelve hundred. A pro classic cost? Yeah, about that. Twelve hundred. That's it. Um, we just found out it's maybe I'll let it off. I can tell you six more. So oh, that five. was, what, five different sets? So, Alohi, Aho, Brown, Soft Tension, Uke Logic, and then Pepe. Um, favorite, such a subjective favorite. Oh, okay. Um, I think I like the Alohis the most, which is the first one. I think it had the biggest all-around sound. Um, it wasn't as bright as the Floral Carbons, which is the last four that I played, um, which is very f ironic because I love Floral Carbon strings and um, nylon strings aren't really for me. But after playing the first one, that one kind of, in my head, set the standard to like, this is a big, warm, it had a lot of low ends. It had a nice resonance, a lot of warmth in the mids. Um, still punchy enough for my liking, um, but I think these last four might have been a little too punchy for this you, which is weird because I love the clarity of like spruce top. Yeah, isn't it from... interesting? It's like really that, interesting. Where cause... like a, a normal pro classic, I mean, I love switching them, mm -hmm. switching out the alohis for a floor carbon set. Mm -hmm. Like any of those sets, right. To me, would be an upgrade, but it's not so clear with this. And it's like when people start talking about string sets and this is good oh, right this is better it's like it's so much depends on right it depends the on the build every, of the instrument and every single instrument on its own because like you know i can say i'm biased and i love floral carbons but after playing these five i think the alohi nylon sound the best with this model of the ponos the master series so yeah and then if i had to place my favorite i guess of the four floral carbon probably like the brown sounded really good on this. Um, there's a there's a, there's more there's a lot of meat to the browns. Yeah. Um, all of them were bright across the board. Um, 
Pepe's note articulation was really clear and clean from what I remember. The, lo the youth logics were really good too, especially on the A string. Browns had more meat, more oomph to it, I think, of the four. Um, the Ahu was pretty bright too on the A strings. I guess the Browns, I think. The Browns are this one for the Pepe's. Because the, 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 the note separation is really clean on this. And then the... All of them had really good sustain and good um, vibrato capabilities. Yeah, the sustain is really nice on these ukes. Yeah, so this cool. is amazing you. <laughs> okay, so um, Kalei, can you sit where Mika's sitting now? We'll do all, all three of the uh, string comparisons from the from that, that main chair. Okay. There's one more, right? That's it. Oh, that was all five? So, uh... Oh, dang. What do you think? <sighs> I think the string sets that I had the most control over as far as, like, my tone and volume, I think it was probably got to be either the Uke Logic or the Pepe set. For some strange reason, um, I felt like I could get more tonal, uh, different tones and tone separation and dynamics from those strings. But then again, like when I played the Olohi, it reminded me of how much I loved the warmth from nylon strings and a whole reason why I used them for so long. And um, I guess it just depends on what you're trying to play. Um, certain strings work better for finger style than others. Um, and also your touch, how hard, how soft, um, and how loud you'd like to strum or play. Um, but those were my my favorites, was Uke Logic or Pepe.
Okay, Corey. I might like these the the most. Let me try the awful one. Oh, grab these it. just have this uh, mid-range like chime. It's really crisp there. though, yeah. Like when you play like. they're fluorocarbons there's like a little bit less harshness that might be a harsh word for what i'm trying <laughs> to describe to it. it's smoother. yeah anyways um i wanted to mention that i had a really long discussion with my dad last night because i i w was just trying to get him to let me discount these more i mean we would make less profit but I just want to make them accessible to people so he agreed to um, let us have these lattice brace um, models exclusive and then I can charge what I want so today I marked them down so these are like $270 under what map pricing would be in his you know structure um, so they're you know they're not cheap but they're really good for for the price. Um, I'm I'm confident they're like um, going to be hard to beat. So um, yeah, they're going to be coming in 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 um, the all acacia model and the all mahogany. And ooh, I'm excited. Those with cedar tops too, and those will cost even less than than these. So it's going to be it's going to be really fun. And baritone, lattice brace baritone. Oh, oh, that's gonna be warm. Like we got some RBSH coming in oh. with the cedar oh, top. I thought they, head. Oh, I thought they were here already. Oh. <laughs> no. It's gonna be the summer shipment. But um, head stuff? yeah. So what does it look? What is the? It's smaller because it's right. It, it's but yeah, it's still gonna be there. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. But these are great. And um, in that wood combination that Mika chose, that many people choose for a serious instrument. Spruce rosewood. Yeah. Cedar walnut. You guys should jam uh, the <laughs> chords to skate. To it. Oh, skate.
Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the one. All right. All, the one. <laughs> All right. Mika, can you um, teach uh, the chords that you were playing? Oh, um, levels one through four. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, the basics of it. Okay, so the beginning, um, where the intro that me, Kalei, and Corey were doing, where. Um, Pretty much gonna hold fret 10, 12, 10, 12, so like that. And then we're gonna go to go ahead to this G7 chord, which is 10, 11, 10, 10, with the 12th fret. Hitting fret 17, 15, back to that first chord, like that, what, F minor 7. And then you're gonna go ahead and hit this really high chord, which is 13, 15, 13, 15. And then Corey and Kalei were doing some gnarly, crazy stuff, so, but the easier version would be, um, 17, 15, 17, 15, 12, 15, 12, 10, 12, and then I like to go ahead and do this chord, which is fret 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, which is like a C9 chord. Um, and then basically the main part of the song is a G minor 7, so 3, 5, 3, 5, to C7, which is 3, 4, 3, 3, uh, moving up two frets to 5, 7, 5, 7, and then to D7, which is 5, 6, 5, 5, and then you do, do that two more times, Um, I like to go to the next position of this D7, which is fret 7, 9, 8, 7, 9, 8, wait, sorry, sorry, 7, 9, 8, 9. And then one more time. And then we're going to go ahead and play the A minor 7, which is 2, 4, 3, 3, to the G minor 7, 3, 5, 3, 5. And then end on this A minor 7, which is 5, 7, 5, 7. And then this part up here, we're going to go and ahead and hold 10, 10, 10, 12 to this A minor 7, which is 9, 9, 8, 10. And then G minor 7, which is just moving that shape two frets down. And then we're going to hit that again, move two frets up, and then back to that first chord. And then one more time. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and switch to this B flat minor 7, which is fret what is that? 6, 8, 6, 8. And then move that shape up two frets up. And then A minor 7 again. Uh, G minor 7, and then we're going to go ahead and play a C7, which is 5, 7, 6, 8, C7, sus. And then after that. And it pretty much just circles, and that's what we were accompanying Kalei with while he took his solo. So, And then at the very end, it's just the same as the intro. So, hope you guys learned something, how to play skate. <laughs> Brutal bars. When, yeah, that's naturally the range you would... Um, play it from the melodies of the song but mm -hmm. then when clay and Corey heard you playing that they knew they needed to take i mean you don't want to these are all high g ukulele so you need to right. find space for it right 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 so um so because i was playing like mostly in the upper register like you know 10 12th fret even sometimes 15th fret what you want to do is that if i'm playing up here you want to go ahead and try do what Corey was doing so if you're watching his part he was playing all the way down here in the first Three frets and he was just pretty much matching my chords but playing it more in the first position um what what that when that happens you're giving the space so instead of having all the highs you know you're doing some of the lower uh, frequencies of the sound spectrum it's kind of like when you have a piano it's like if everyone's doing you have three piano players and they're all like right here versus Corey will be right here and i'll be right here and then Kalei is soloing somewhere in between <laughs> me, and, me and Corey so that, you know, we're, the three of us are trying to I'm fill out. <laughs> filling out the whole entire sound spectrum. So, you know, if you're playing in a group and you notice, you know, this, this is more of an advanced kind of thing. But if you notice that a lot of people are playing like in the first position, um, try to see if you know how to play maybe in the middle of the ukulele, like around the fifth fret or even up here. Um, yeah. Corey, can you show the chords that you were... So, G minor 7, um, what would you play? Yeah, you could play that exactly with low G too, so, mm -hmm. G minor 7, and that's just a B flat, but you're letting go of your ring finger, so it's 0, 2, 1, 1, and then a C7, and then an A minor 7th to a D7, mm -hmm. and then... So when we match that and play that together, it would be more like... So you can hear how it's more spaced out. It's not cluttered. Yeah. So it just and gives, it just makes the, hear more of the sound spectrum. If so. you're in the, I guess if you're in the lower frequency, you're automatically a part of like the rhythm section. 
and like bass even so mm. like you hold down the other part of the um the whole <laughs> So what Corey is doing too is like he's playing like the middle two strings, which is like the lower frequencies of the ukulele, and then I'll go ahead and emphasize more of the bottom two strings because that's like the highest, so we get an even wider sound spectrum. Clay's so playing up, just up, like what he's doing. Above. So you throw yeah, a nice full song. Like think, fills. think like a bass player, I guess. Yeah, you're doing like bass slap licks. And... Yeah. <laughs> He's just doing Corey things. Have to <laughs> s- Pulling around. Sign up for Corey, Corey's funk lessons. Uh, learn how to make ramen. Funk master class. <laughs> just all noodles. I'm a, I'm a noodle chef. <laughs> Professional. All right, so um, last week we tried some of the fluke banjo ukes, the fireflies. This week, uh, I want to try the Solid Koa series in three, oh. three different sizes. So we have the tenor, the concert flukes, and the soprano flea from the Magic Flute Company. So let's check those out. C, C7, <laughs> F, whatever minor that is. Okay. And then, yeah, it's the same. Okay. Catching a wave. Okay. That, that same... And then in between, we'll just do...
<laughs> Catching a wave. It's the only words I know. <laughs> Mika, go first with the tenor. All right. Let's see. So. Yeah. <laughs> Solid Hawaiian koa top, and uh, these are made in America. Yeah. Sound great. You can get them in the five hundred-ish range or so. Big sound. We we. Get them upgraded with the uh, sorry peghead tuners. Look like all these are fairly doable. Totally. Well, the cool, best thing about it is that you never have to look for a uke stand. Can, can you do that too? <laughs> I was just thinking about that, like, my dog would knock it over so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I ended up in F. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Uh, I think you missed a couple of chords there. <laughs> so, wandered there. I don't know. <laughs> My computer fan's going off because I forgot to. the koa concert from fluke and very resonant this is solid koa on top um this is with the upgraded fretboards and the peghead tuners these are some of the best tunings you can get so check it out
solid chord top soprano ukulele. Um, this comes with all of the upgrades, uh, most of the upgrades pretty much available um, that you can put on these ukuleles. You have a really nice bridge, um, rodent fretboard, um, upgraded fret wires, and also the tuning keys for the peg heads. So, very, really durable. All of these ukuleles can stand by themselves. And um, yeah, good sound and good vibes from this. Pretty sweet. That's nice. Oh. You, you know, we we still have three of those, probably the last ones available, because there was only 13 in total made of those Kuipo um, Kanilea? Kanilea models. Um, I'm thinking, like, maybe if you guys can try a Can't Help Falling in Love on those, that would be pretty cool. Huh? Automatic. Yeah, so we'll close out with that. Sounds good. See how many techniques you can incorporate. <laughs>
All right. We didn't play the. It was a B section, right? What was it? Oh, da, 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 like river flow. It's okay. No one, no one cares about that part. <laughs> a minor E seven, right? Yeah. And then. <laughs> well then. Song of the year, 1990. Rings for days. In, in Hawaii. So we, we have a um, sound sample and we have the concert listed at the website, but we need one for this tenor that you have, Corey. Oh, this is serial number 25632. That helps. It's cool, huh, with the red tortoise. I like the, the ruby. Yeah. Tengra. Real ruby.
Nice. That's nice. So, um, Mika was asking about uh, the difference between last year's Platinum and this year's, and there's probably some other people out there that would enjoy a comparison. So, yeah, let me grab those. <clears throat> okay, so this is the first time that I am holding and seeing the 2022 Kanye Le'a Platinum in person. Um, I did go ahead and watch the reveal that Kanye Le'a did a few weeks ago. I also watched Craig and Sarah play their beautiful duet together on two of the 2022 Kanye Le'a Platinums, and it was such a treat and joy to watch. I even texted Sarah like, beautiful, I loved it so much. She's like, thank you so much, Mika. So, um, so I, yeah, I got to check in and see you know some of the specs that they went ahead and talked about. Um, and yeah, this is an absolutely beautiful instrument, especially with the... Is it Craig Lav Lavin? Mm -hmm. Craig Lavin? Okay, yeah. His um, <laughs> outst outstanding um, inlay work on the headstock and, and the waterfall here on the on the fretboard. But what I'm noticing is that we have a solid koa neck um, with a mango strip here in the middle. And I'm aware that when you use koa for a neck, koa is a lot heavier than, say, mahogany. So, you know, sometimes the, the danger, I guess, of putting koa with the neck is that your instrument can be top heavy, um, especially if you have a thinner body. But the first thing I noticed when I picked up this platinum is how balanced it was and how easy it was to, to play. I went ahead and just picked it up and tuned it. And I was like, wow, I don't feel any top heaviness of it, even though we have the solid koa. It still feels very easy to play, easy to hold. Um, I don't have to do any kind of compensation to adjust for the neck. It still feels normal. So that's that's really outstanding. It's really cool. Um, yeah, as usual, Kanilea providing the goods with the, the most beautiful koa you can ever see on the instrument. And then using, again, solid koa. Crazy colors on this neck of this platinum. But um, I went ahead and I think I played... To be safe, I think I played a total of three platinums from the 2020, which the the D series, uh, the 2021, which I'm gonna go ahead and play and compare it to this one, and then now the 2022 with this one. And um, what I'm noticing right off the bat with this platinum, sound wise, is that this one boasts uh, a lot of low end frequency. So there's a lot of depth, a lot of low end frequency, which gives the ukulele a lot of depth, which is right, but. There's a good sense of mids and high end still with the instrument, but I'm noticing that a lot of it comes from the low end. So yeah, you get a really deep sound, very mature sounding ukulele. It's so easy to play, it's set up really nice. You can do a lot of runs like that. This thing is so beautiful and it sounds it sounds beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a sound sample of me playing this. So I'll try to play the same thing again on the 2021 platinum. So let's see. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, do some sound comparisons from this 2022 model to this year 2021 Platinum that we, we have in stock. So 
Um, yeah, I remember this very clearly from the first time we got to play it, or the first time I got to play it back in, I believe, it was January, maybe February or January of 2021. And I was so blown away by this plateau because of one, the playability, um, how light this, the build of this instrument is, um, how beautiful this instrument is, especially with the curly coil, the really aesthetic, you know, coal leaves here uh, as a sound hole on the face, here on the sides. Um, so elegant, and I know it had the piece here in the back that you can take off, and um, I, I think to drill in a sound hole or just to be able to do work on the inside. But I always thought that was a really, really cool little feature. And then the first time they had the the sand off here or the the dip here, so that it's very really comfortable to go ahead and play this thing for hours. But yeah, sound wise, I was so impressed and blown away when I first played it. Um, this ukulele comparing itself to the 2022 Platinum, I've noticed that there's not as much low end response in this, but more it's going to be excelling in the mids, especially in the highs. Um, right off the bat, if I were to just strum a C chord or just pick all the notes, I can definitely hear a lot of the mo a lot more of the highs and a lot more of the mid part of the sound spectrum versus the other one really excelled in the lower end of the sound spectrum. So it had a lot of, a lot more oomph, a lot more depth, depth. Um, a lot more resonance, but this one has a lot of resonance too, but more um, more of a warmer kind of sound with those crystal clear highs on the bottom two strings. Um, for me, sound-wise, my preference, um, I think this 2021 Platinum sound is more my style because of how, how much um, of the mids and how warm and resonant it is. I think for me, if I have too much low end in my playing, it's going to get too muddy with um, the kind of... The kind of sound that I'm looking for in my particular fingerstyle playing. So, with this instrument, with a lot of brights and a lot of mids, um, there's a lot of a lot of that warmth in that middle of the sound spectrum, and being able to hear all of my notes super crystal clear. Um, that's the kind of sound that I look for for my again playing style. Playing style um, sound is super subjective, so you know it's just my opinion. And, I, I totally know what you mean, but like for, say, like the piece that you just played, mm. I might prefer the new one just for that style. Right, because you're really, I'm trying to really hone in on that low G right. presence, right? So it really is like, oh, that's a really deep sounding right, right, kind right. of sound. Versus maybe if I were to play on the highs or maybe in the middle or the upper frets and focusing more on... Yeah, like most of your pieces, more. you might, you know, right, right. fit better with this. But so, cer certain ones, you know. Right. So, again, it just depends on your playing style. It depends even where you're playing on the fretboard. You know, like on the other piece, I was playing a lot. I was trying to play a lot in the first three frets and trying to really emphasize the low G um, string because I'm playing a low G instrument. But um, I'm usually a high G player and I'm kind of playing more on the upper parts of the fretboard. So I kind of am used to hearing or want to hear a certain kind of sound in my instruments. And you kind of like a brighter sound. Right, I kind of prefer that floral carbon, more bitey, has a bite to it kind of sound. Which is kind of ironic because then I got a Ko'ola, which kind of has more of a lower end. But I kind of, I like that sound too. Um, play that piece on yeah. this one that you played on. So yeah, you guys can go ahead and hear the difference how, because this one doesn't have as much low presence as the other one, it's going to sound different, but the highs are going to sparkle a little more compared to the other one. So just depends on your preference. All right, here we go.
so this one definitely has a lot more sparkle um but yeah it doesn't have nearly as much of that low end presence on the low g um string in the upper or the lower register um so they yeah both, i, I guess it's just a beautiful sound. right right i mean again we're, we're splitting hairs here trying to you know really get into tell us in the comments what you guys think because terrible ears bad taste in sound no <laughs> but, way i mean you can't go wrong either way it's right it, like... it, again it's really your preference you know everyone's going to kind of lean towards a certain way um whether they like the lower presence they like more of the mids more of the highs they like the sparkle um if you have more of the sparkle it's going to be hard to get some of that lower presence so for me my ear kind of just gravitates towards to really really crystal clear highs but again, guys, it's 2021 Platinum, 2022 Platinum. This is the cream of the crap ukuleles in the ukulele world. So whatever you're going to get, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But trust your ears and go for the one that moves you the most. Absolutely. I missed you, Mika. It's good to see you it's again. It's been too long. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to be back. Thank you for having me. I need uh, to get more lessons from you, but it's 11.45 <laughs> right now. And I'm out of gas. Jack in the Box is calling you. We always oh, a bunch do of these. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta teach some of the stuff that I've been teaching my college classes. That'd be pretty. Yeah, cool. tell me what what you're gonna what you're gonna teach when. I, I mean, let's schedule it as soon as you possibly can. Yeah, get some lessons in. But um, yeah, you know, in my college course, um, so I either teach an eight week accelerated course, so I kind of just like front load everything um, mm -hmm. in eight weeks, or I'll teach like a sixteen week class, and it's all online. Um, I'm set up in my my office or my my home. Um, with all the right equipment but basically it just i kind of try to go, co uh, cut the class in half whether it's the eight week or the 16 week class i cut it in half where i spend the first few weeks going over techniques of you know basic music theory that applies to ukulele um i'm come from more of a classical background so i like to kind of teach that side of playing like you know you want to hold your instrument like this try to be really relaxed um, with your left and right hand techniques so i go over a bit of that um I teach chord shapes and all that kind of stuff so you know how to navigate the fretboard, um, fretboard confidence. Um, and then I go ahead and again split the class in half so I teach strumming. So first half is like the theory stuff and then strumming. So then I try to teach like local island contemporary music which is really common here in the islands in Hawaii. Um, and then kind of shifting to learning some basic Hawaiian stuff, how to do Hawaiian strumming, doing playing some Hawaiian songs. And then I go ahead and shift the other half of the class into picking, learning how to pick with your thumb and be able to do kind of like that old style of just like doing a strum with your pick or with your thumb and then be able to do simple picking with your thumb. And then I go ahead and, in and introduce the pointer. So plucking with your thumb and your pointer and then eventually learning going um, intro to finger style, which is using your, your thumb pointer in the middle, being able to assign fingers to your strings and then being able to do some simple finger style stuff. And that pretty much covers the whole ukulele one, intro to ukulele um, in my college class. And then when I teach ukulele two for the first time in a week, in the beginning of March, I'll let you guys know how that goes and some of the songs that I ended up teaching because I'm gonna go more, a lot more hardcore, do a lot of more finger style stuff uh, up the difficulty, but um, I'm looking forward to it. It's been Beautiful. really fun teaching at the college level. Getting college credits for ukulele is super cool. Everyone's pretty stoked about that. Like, what? Pick ukulele? <laughs> you could probably sign up too, right? I mean, you don't Right. Have to, I mean, like... you technically have to be oh, within you... a student. Uh, well, the thing with the colleges sometimes I'm teaching at, those... it's not too hard to apply to be a student. It's, I don't think you have to like dig up your transcripts or and, like it's not a super long process. I think it's yeah. free to apply. Right, right, right. Um, but you just have to be a student and then, yeah, you right. could sign up. Take my class. Windward Community College and UH West Oahu. If you're on the east side? Anywhere in the world. I have, right now, my ukulele one class, I have someone on the east coast. So Wait, have to, what? Yeah, so th this is online. So you oh. can, anyone from, any, you know, in the U.S. or if they're out of the country, they can s sign up for the class. So cool. all, the beauty of online, wherever you are. Wow, so. very cool. Okay. Well, check that out and check out MikaKane.com, right? Yeah. For, for lessons. And right. If um, if you guys go to our website, the ukulele site.com, and you become a member there, you'll get some lessons that Mika gave. I'll be um, updating with gave, some, and then some more up-to-date lessons. Yeah, we're going right. to be coming with more soon. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you so much for thank your you. time. Pleasure. We, it's always a fun time being with the guys and yeah, jamming and totally. getting my ass kicked. Oh, getting my butt kicked. <laughs> it's good to have you back. Oh, man. It's, it's such a blast here. So All right, hope guys. to be back soon. We love you. Jams. Love you guys. And um, 
if you hit the like button and subscribe, you know, it tells YouTube that people like us and to, sh you know, show up on other people's feeds. So that helps us out and let us know whenever we can help. Hit us up and we'll see you next time. Aloha.